you hit the record because we'll, we'll just get going because um, I'm like, I'm looking forward to this. Well, I put yeah. myself down. If I put myself down here, are, can, is, is it getting in the way of the screen or should I get rid of the? No, no, I no. This, OK, this is this is the way I think is uh, the best. Yeah, perfect. Available. OK, let's get rocking on this because this is a big topic. This has been coming up over and over again for me as well. And it's coming up with new agencies around what are we going to do? Like, how do we do this? You know, like, what does it look like? And I've had this sort of idea of if I was starting again, what would I take the best of what agencies are doing right now? And what do I know is working? What do I see that out, that's out there that's working? So this is about, is the retainer dead? Long live the retainer. Is it, what's that from? Um, long, long live the king. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if long anyone doesn't know king. me, I know, yeah, the king is dead, long live the king. Can't remember. Um, now, just do a quick, uh, some people know me, some people don't. I'm an ex-hubspotter, reformed digital agency owner. I do agency coaching and consulting. That's all I specialize in, mergers, acquisitions, fixing, scaling, reinventing, have a book, have a podcast, going to have a clubhouse. And way, way, way back when, when we were allowed to do competitions, I used to lift. And now I don't even know what to call myself anymore because it's so bad. So, um, and yes, and I, I work, uh, do some great stuff with um, Alex. Been working with him for, geez, you know, 18 months or so. So future opportunities. Now, there's three big areas that I see for agencies coming up, right? We know that you're going to do content and campaigns and things like that, but the, the race now is to figure out how to do these more effectively, better utilization, um, you know, better results for your clients, all do them quicker. So I have three big plays that I'm helping agencies focus on for the next two to five years, right? Because that's where we're going. When it comes to what you're doing right now, you got to start looking at marketing AI because there's tools out there right now and some of them will just blow your mind that if you start bringing them in, it's going to improve your overall content. But the long term is training, educating and coaching. It's such a massive area now, digital sales and marketing, that you really do have to start getting into the teaching your clients how to fish. And the final one, which is the one I'm going to spend most amount of time on, is strategic marketing as a service. And I'm going to talk about a solution that I've been working with that's come out of, it's Australia, but it's a UK um, lady that invented it. And that's where I'm going to, sp but let's first touch on the first two. So if the first two were like, yeah, I've been thinking about marketing AI, or I've been thinking about training and education, I want to give you some tips on where to go and start building in, obviously, partner programs. Alex, AI tools and things like that, you know, we've got smith.ai. What are, what are the kind of, SE, Hike SEO uses some of that in the back end, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, AI is, uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't like to refer to many things as AI, not even smith.ai. It's kind of, it's kind of a loose term that gets thrown around, but <laughs> the conversation that clients will bring to the table is obviously are we using this tool what what are you using the back end they want to know whether yeah. or not it is being used to optimize campaigns and then it's just a tough conversation for the agencies to be in where it's kind of pigeon held in a way where it's it's technically machine learning but the client wants to know that you're using the best tools out there to get the job done but um, yeah. i don't need to talk about that well we do know that we you know coming to you guys like coming to us that's you're going to get some education around that but also if you don't know about Paul Ratzer's business he's got PR 2020 he's been dabbling in marketing AI and AI and artificial intelligence for a very long time so definitely go there and look at what's coming up there you can do certifications just like you can do HubSpot and so you can start to learn about hang on a second oh, how can we improve how quickly we do our reports maybe you weren't talking to the clients about them but they're in the back and you're improving your utilization, you're challenging your team because they can be more experts in things, you're taking the grunt work that nobody wants to do. Um, Albert.ai, another PPC one, huge um, at, at the moment. But the big one, if you haven't seen it, like this is doing the buzz. Have you seen this, Alex? This is conversion.ai. And it is 
yeah. a banger. Uh, Jamie White put us onto it the other day in a, in, a, in a mastermind. And I was like, oh my God. So from writing blog posts to creating product content, it is a game changer. And it's like 29 bucks or something ridiculous. So definitely, you know, starting to think about your AI strategy, whether you talk about it with clients or not, but getting someone on your team to really dig into this. The next one to look at is the training, education, and coaching. And if you want to look at the leaders in this, and I'm actually working with them at the moment, is Impact. So Impact um, and Impact Plus, which is their academy and their training, Impact have realized very, through a lot of pain, that the creating content for the clients all the time is, is just become too hard. It's, it's, you never get the results. They don't really understand what they're doing. They can't hit the deadlines. So they've moved away from doing that. They'll do paid, they'll do websites, and now they're into training, education, and coaching. They want to teach with the Ask You Answer, um, Marcus Sheridan's methodology in the backbone. They want to start teaching clients how to hire a content person, how to hire a videographer, how to hire... Uh, HubSpot expert and actually help companies become fully self-sufficient using they ask you answer methodology and if you want to check that out go over that's um will get you into impact plus pretty sure it's free uh, yeah it is free um and you can go and check out that link just to go okay what are they doing here and I want you to think wider than what they're doing so even if they're in America they're not specializing in particular niches you have a niche that you can specialize you have your um accent you know even if you are in america it's about your region your geographic your area of expertise your accent and then sure it opens up the whole of europe and all the languages and all of that but the one so there's the two ones you know start to look at marketing and how are you going to do your own academy your own training your own coaching how are you educating people and then the final one is nine boxes so that's the one which has a strategic marketing as a service and that's the one i'm going to deep dive in now if anyone wants to go and talk to me about the others really happy to do that and as i flesh things out more with what i'm helping impact with my come back around and go look this is how you build your academy or whatever but the one i'm going to talk about now is this one so we these are some of the challenges that we just saw agencies have in 2020 now these were canaries before like nobody's gonna go ah it was it was going tickety boo there was things starting to decay end of 2019 that agencies were experiencing clients were going on pause retainers were getting cancelled they weren't seeing the value in marketing they were afraid to make wrong decisions they were starting to get a bit sketchy you know they were like oh i think i'm going to make a mistake things were losing traction with an agency after about the nine month mark that's when they would start to churn or bounce over to another agency in 2020 you heard a lot of oh we'll wait till things return to normal and where are we now do you know there is the, no, I, I don't even know how to say the word normal anymore <laughs> is it a word um agencies not having a relationship with the ceo and the board of their clients now this is a massive pain point and some of it comes from a hangover of they had a corporate job and they didn't like their corporate job and they didn't want to talk to the ceo again uh, some of it is they don't feel qualified or um, have enough experience to have a conversation with the CEO and the board. So they end up having conversations, CMO and below. So when they're trying to get ROI justified or get back in, they don't feel equipped. So these are some of the challenges. And I'm going to circle back around at the end and talk about why strategic marketing can solve all of these for you. OK. This I just love, right? What clients believe about marketing. I don't care how much you say it, blue in the face. Clients 100% think marketing is sales. And I'm going to actually prove this to you because I got to, to do a great bit of work last year, which was really cool, which kind of led to all of this. They're looking for lots of sales ready hot leads, no matter how much you say it to them, going, I'm going to help you get leads. They, they, they still think that they're just going to be hot and bouncing in the door. They think it's collateral, it's websites, it's merchandise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what clients believe about marketing. Now, I was really lucky last year. I'm, st I'm still doing it. The Digital Marketing Institute in Ireland has international clients who do masters on thesis and research papers all around the world. So I get to mentor them. So they bring a paper to me. Uh, we, I help them do it. And one of them came up last year, and this was Stevie Brown. You'll see her down here at the bottom, thechangestarter.com, if you go and check out her website. 
Stevie brought to me a paper that we worked on. I helped her work on a thesis that is now turning into a book all around the misconceptions of marketing in the small business sector. Now, what it actually brought was this massive realization of why things are so hard. She did uh, company research, agency research, small business research. And she has all the details on that. And her, her research paper, like I said, is now a book. It starts here. The company goes, they have a bit of budget, but not really, right? They're not really putting their full weight around it. They engage a third party, i.e. you, the agency. The briefing ain't that great. And your briefing perhaps could be better, right? So your briefing's off. Crossed wires start to come in where they go, it's sales, even though you've gone, it's marketing. It, that just happens all the time. The relationship starts to fail. Now that could be just a tiny bump, but because of the previous four steps, it gets amplified. Then they just break out and go, marketing doesn't work. Then you're just in this possible in cycle where they do this. They try again, inevitably failure, some budget, or they do things like they say here at marketing doesn't work. They go, oh, this is what happened with the last agency. And you're like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And this is really what has been happening. And this is why it has been so hard. And it really has been fascinating. And it has been deteriorating over time. So what are we going to do about it? What we know is that if you have strategy, you can inform digital and inform creative. By having a strategy that's aligned with the business um, the, the business. Um, strategy of, of, of the whole company, you have a deeper connection with clients at the C-suite because you're going to have a strategy. So this is what Ninebox is, strate strategic marketing service for agencies. So like I said, like I've been out in the field for a long time. I've worked with HubSpot agencies. It's all very tactical. It's about the tech. And now if you lead with the tech, the company just gets completely overwhelmed. It's such a big piece of machinery. So by leading out with this is the strategy and this is how the tech sits in underneath it. You're just going to have a much better chance of getting ahead with and staying longer because the big thing is now longer. So nine boxes is a data driven framework. It's got concepts and tools and techniques that give you a structured delivery process for strategic marketing services. The benchmark and the framework, which I'll show at the end, has got four and a half thousand companies have gone through it. So when you put your company through it and I can show you how to put your agency through it so you can give it a test run yourself, it's benchmarking against four and a half thousand companies all around the world. So, you know, when you're trying to get that proof of concept over to a client going, you know, they're asking for, well, where's your proof? How does this work? You straight away are getting that authority, that status, that recommendation. These are the typical digital marketing services that we have right now. They focus on campaigns. So it's the 60, the 30, 60, right? It's that quick, 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 we can get you a quick win. If they come in too late, they don't get a result quickly enough. Now, coming in too late could be they just don't get the content back to you on time or they go on holidays or they don't realize that every single day, every hour of every day is really important to you. Too much focus on the technology. Now, I have seen this over and over again, especially when HubSpot agencies come into the inbound ecosystem and they start talking about inbound when really the client doesn't care and really the client knows that the technology needs to be there, but they're not as passionate about it as, let's say, we are because we're kind of nerds and we love that stuff or agencies do as well. The clients believe that they're going to get sales results. Like I said, that no matter how much you tell them, and I've heard the agency say this over and over again to me. They're going, but I told them it was marketing and I'm going, it doesn't matter. They think it's sales. They, they genuinely think it's sales or that the leads come through that you're going to help them with the sales process. Are, how are they following up? Are they calling them? Are they calling them in five minutes? Are they emailing them or emailing them within an hour? So the leads come in and if the sales process isn't carried through, it's a disaster. And then it's too tactical. So like I talked about, they're not up at the CEO or the board level. They're down with the CMO and it goes in a kind of a circle. And the CMO is trying to tell the CEO what to do, but he hasn't got the, the words, the strategy, the plan that the C-suite understands and needs as part of the business plan. So this is what the framework likes. It's got nine levers that any business can pull on for growth and commercial advantage. So you've got position, capability, channel. So that's about your find. You've got, you're familiar with this. You've got your buyer's journey in there, but also communication and starting conversations. 
product services, client management and client service. Now, what you'll notice here is there's no acronyms, which I know we're absolutely notorious for in this MarTech world, you know, MarTech slash AI world. So these are words that companies understand, C-suite understand, CEOs understand. And I think a lot of people forget, even though we've been in the marketing industry for a long time, a lot of people find it scary intimidating they don't understand it they also feel like they should understand it and then they get even more anxious because they don't and you start talking acronyms so a big part of this as well is if you can start to bring it down to language that they understand i just saw rob there shout out for rob i feel like i'm in, <laughs> i'm in a cabaret now <laughs> i haven't seen uh, i haven't seen rob's name in ages <laughs> Who is a good fit for adopting nine boxes? So if you want to look at you yourself as an agency, you know that you haven't had a deeper relationship. Why? Because they bounced last year. Now they might have come back, but they very quickly went. Because you have this big, long plan that's going up and down the organization, it's embedded in there. It's not a tactic. It's not a switch off thing. It's a, oh, no, that's part of our business. The retainers have got all the agencies that we've had um, working in nine boxes. They've been able to keep their retainers. They might have dialed them down a little bit, but they were able to dial back up. Very comfortable now with having conversations with the C-suite, not intimidated, have the language, have the strategy that the C-suite CEOs understand. And they want to improve their strategic skills. So agencies have realized, hang on, we've been down here now in the tech and the campaigns in the 60, 90 days, which is great. And that's fine too. But how do you get up into the strategy without having to hire like a, a super strategic expert? You're going to have to hire a strategy consultant, but they can train themselves up. Okay. Are there any questions there from the field? Alex, where am I going? Am I speaking too fast in my Irish accent? Because I'm going to no. have a drink of water. No, no questions uh, that I can think of, but obviously chime in if anyone has any. We can um, open it up towards the end too. We're scheduled for 30 minutes, but I think, Clodagh, we're going to hang on at least for another 15, 20 oh, afterwards. Few questions. Totally. And I am going to be on time because I have practiced it. And I am telling you now there will be time for questions. I am not going to go <laughs> up to the nose, but I will hang on if people want to as well. So what type of clients do you need to, you know, to have this? You have these, you have these clients already, but it might be that you just haven't been able to get up the, the food chain. So the CEO and the leadership team, they love this. They just, they, they know this, like I said, four and a half thousand in the benchmark, they can feel secure. It's language they understand. You're looking for ambitious SMBs that are prepared to invest in themselves. So again, they know that they have to do the work. Now, if I go back to point two in the three opportunities, we need to find, to start working with companies that are going to join us. This is why agencies are failing with their clients right now, because the client goes, yeah, sure, the agency is doing everything. And they check out of the sales and marketing process. If they're not getting in and learning it and educating themselves and taking on pieces of it, because it's so big right now, you know, it's very difficult to work with a company long term. If they've got a defined growth that targets at the center of their business, they're in the right headspace for growth. So, so they know that they want to grow um, connected and working with other professionals and they're privately owned and controlled. So as you can see, it suits a lot of people, right? It can be, it's definitely for a wide range. You're not limited. Just wanted to throw in the samples in here. Now, if you go to the event here, there is a longer video or you can reach out to me, you can have a chat, but I just wanted to give you a kind of, well, how would it start? You get a benchmark and you have it branded yourself and you can charge straight away for that. How many of us are doing way too much free work? So straight from the beginning, you can either give the client a voucher to have it free or you can charge. Into that, you get a company report and you can charge it back to that. You can go, here's your benchmark, here's your recommendations. You can do some online classes, master classes, bring people in so you can see, I, I taught this, I actually did this talk at Inbound because I could see that agencies were giving too much free stuff. And this was very similar to a model, hence why I'm working with nine boxes of you better start charging as soon as possible. You have to start making money in the sales and education process. You move it up then. Once you're in the business, you can do the marketing assessment. Or they want customer insights, which is another report. And then anywhere between 500 to 10K a month, 
if you want to start working with them on a retainer because they're like we need help with this plan now it's never you're going to walk away from the tactics they do need tech software they do need campaigns they're going to need logos they're going to need websites but you have this overarching strategy that is there all the time and then you can add additional work in there this is not about walking away and turning your business uh, your agency into like a strategic consultant consultancy that's not what this is about okay so if we remember the challenges we had at the top right clients going on pause that does not happen you're an integral part of their business they'll dial up and down but it is not going on pause they have security it's now four and a half thousand is the benchmark of businesses globally so this, they're not going to make the wrong decision because you've got the kudos and the authority to go no we have the benchmark now they see the value instead of you know before now you can show that return on investment it's not a fad it's not a hey look at this new conversational marketing that i'm just talking about which is a part of the business it's business language that everyone understands and and that provides a lot of security in this mental world where people don't even understand what's going to happen next you can get to the ceo table with confidence now you have the tools you have the conversation it's not about a mismatch there and you can stop all the free pitching. Like I said, this used to bug me so much in HubSpot. Passionate, amazing agencies going out and educating the market for free. I, I, it just bugged me. Now, from the day one, you can start to get and earn money as you educate, as you get to know, as you qualify. So if you want to get one of these, I just... Right now, I'll give you a code and we can put all the links in afterwards about go and get your own benchmark. So see what that looks like and see what a client will go through. Book a call to go through your results. You can have a chat and then you can actually go, actually, this is something we'd like to explore either now or in the future. So if you want to do that, you go here are the links, you go to nine boxes and that's three by three dot com and you can use the code GROW. Um, or if you head to my website, I've got a whole um, information there. Or in the events, we've got um, a, very, a, a longer explanation video about this. But um, there, right, questions. <laughs> that was fly through. <laughs> oh, man, we've got a couple of people that are joining late. Looks like Nilo had to hop on and off. Oh, no oh, problem. Tristan, welcome back, Tristan. This is number two for you, buddy um very cool yeah so uh nilo and tristan i think nilo you hopped off back on so if you have any questions about what was said but i think the main thing is uh the takeaways there are figuring out how to charge earlier um how to charge more often how to get to that place i think in the maturity curve really and uh, and honestly the respect and thought leadership curve with your clients where uh, they understand that just being involved with you is a value and um, the whole process from discovery all the way through should be, uh, should be valuable enough to pay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, I want to talk about this. Um, you, you mentioned something there at the end that I think will have sort of a split, uh, split, um, I don't know, a perception on, but the, uh, the willingness to teach and educate for free and when and how and what should the thought lead, um, the thought process be on giving away uh, strategies, tactics, all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, with, as an agency. Yeah. So by using, like I said, I've been working with Marcus and Bob in over an impact, but if you start to use all the marketing collateral, so the things that people are asking for, you can use that in your sales process. So it's things like if someone's coming to you and they're interested in a website, you'd send them a website buyer's guide, and then you have a meeting about the buyer's guide. So it's all about tightening the sales process. And people, you know, what we've got to remember, I used to see this all the time. I did it myself when I had an agency. The person, the client in the agency has uh, they're getting paid. The CMO is getting paid whether he sits looking out the window at the birds, whether he does back-to-back -back meetings, whether he does a load of work, he's getting paid to be, you know, and if you're going in and pitching and educating and, and you know, more or less entertaining, 
he gets paid, you don't. So you've got to figure out how can we get them, what training material, what thought leadership um, videos, what are you actually producing so that they are watching that you are not producing for, you're not wasting your time for free. That's the whole thing. And then when you do get there, their questions are much more qualified. Your sales cycle is much better. They've shown that they are prepared to do a bit of work. They're prepared to meet you, that they're not there to be prepared for a dog and pony show because that's sometimes what a lot of clients do you know it is perfectly acceptable for a cmo to answer a ceo with what's happening with the new 2022 strategy and them to go oh we're we're meeting agencies sure that could take months and the ceo knows that that's work do you know what i mean so whereas you are like where are we going to get our next client so i just saw this all the time it's so important to get all your team doing videos, creating content, you know, finding out all those things that you need on your website about pricing, about your top questions, about comparisons, about reviews. They ask you answer material, you know, getting that, putting it in the sales process. Awesome. I think Rob has a question and then um, over to, I believe Jan has a question. Or is it, or is it just hello? <laughs> Hi, Rob. How are you? That's nice good to see you, you, man. It's so great. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, um, things have been busy, so that's good. Um, I have a question about this nine boxes. Is this a, a one-time strategy? Like, I, you know, the, the track I kind of get in is we do strategy and yeah. then we get really tactical. And then our plan is to really try to do strategy like every, every quarter, which Got it. Yeah. turns into every six months and once a year is what it turns into. Because the yeah. client doesn't want to do strategy that much. So does nine boxes help with this kind of framework for strategy ongoing or is this a one-time thing? No, it's the ongoing because you're going to circle back around. So you'll have these points. Imagine here you're going, okay, products and services. You're actually, you're going, what is our positioning? A new product and service. You've got your capability. You've got your channel. Then it's the buyer's journey for that. So this can be going on for every time there's a new product a new service a review it's it's going on and on like some of the so debbie richardson is the lady that invented this she was in corporate marketing actually i think she did an episode with me i'll try and remember the number on um agency life and she was in the corporate marketing communications game advertising game in london moved down to australia realized this was a massive part that was missing and created this and she's been working with clients for years because you just circle back around it's part of the process and it goes on and on you you still have to do the tactical obviously but you can get pulled back up into the big strategy for oh let's review this for the next nine nine months for the year yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool that's really cool yeah, yeah. awesome yeah. yeah check out the video and check out the podcast um because then you'll, you'll, you'll actually hear a more deep dive because she had a choice. She could have gone and back, you know, she was in Australia. She could have set up an agency, but she had this vision to go, hang on. And I heard about her years ago when I heard about it, I went, this is a massive area of opportunity for marketing technology agencies, tactical agencies who feel this is missing and it's, it's there, it's ready to go, you know? Cool. 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 What was the other question? Uh, Jan just had a statement, uh, not a question, I guess, but um, anybody else? All right. Okay, well, uh, we Frankie are going Jan, to- Episode 77. <laughs> what is it? Episode 77 with uh, Debbie Richardson. Oh, very cool, very cool. Did you put a link to that? Oh, statement episode 77. Yeah, if you have a link to that. I'll add that to the notes. I'll go and find it for you now because I've got that. But is who is doing like who is doing strategy at this sort of like because everyone's doing it in some certain forms. I'd love to hear what your experience is or how it's come up before or did you try it and it was like no, it didn't work. We went back to campaigns. Love to hear. I'll, I'll jump in again since I'm off mute. Um, cool. <laughs> I'm on video uh, and I hate typing. Um, <laughs> you know, we do strategy and then the CEO gets bored with us or like get, doesn't get bored with us, but goes back to his or her day job 
And then we don't really talk to them very much anymore. Yeah. Even though we sort of have a direct line. I mean, I could email them. I try not to bother them too much, but we do try to bring them in. But guaranteed, uh, we, ha we actually have really long retainers. Well, awesome. they're not even retainers, they're engagements. They're month to month engagements that go on for years. They don't even have an expiration on them. Um, and we're lucky for that, but they, they do get over, the longer they are, the more tactical they get. Yeah. And, right. Because even the team sort of gets into this. Even my contacts are not very strategic. Even if they were CMO, they're not that strategic. They're just like, I, I got to show up. We got to do these 15 things this month. Let's do them. Right. Yeah. So this is an area that we've been navigating and working on with some agencies around build, bringing in the CEO at the very beginning and just setting the conditions with them and going, you are part of this process. We have tried, the old way is you go, yeah, set and forget, it's all over there. But if you don't understand that part of your job as a CEO to hit your goals, to hit your profits, is that you are an integral part of this and you need to be at the quarterly meetings, you need to be on top of these things. It's about bringing them in. This is no longer, it's out there. It is fundamental yeah. and it's getting more and more. Like there was a stage where, we kind of knew it all, right? You know, a few years ago, you could kind of run it all. It's now massive. And if you think of where video is going, if you look at most websites don't have any video. So most of the companies that we're working with with Impact right now, they are hiring full-time videographers. And these aren't like multinational companies. They're, they're companies in, you know, the roofing they're in foam insulation they're kind of manufacturing but they have a full-time videographer because there's so much content to pump out that it's available so if you think managing your content managing your videographer the ceo has to understand that this is how the business is going to be around you know and and to read the books that they're as much as reading as forbes and as you know, all his business novel books up there, he has to start reading how this works because our whole lives have changed. Everyone has changed. It's no longer that marketing sales thing out there. Sure, we're buying cars, going places, booking things all different than we ever did before. So they can't outsource it. That's what's been causing the problem is it's there. Meanwhile, we've all completely changed how we buy shop live do interact but he thinks he can run the business differently so bringing them in getting it in the beginning going you were a part of this you have to be a part of this you've changed the business is changing and then making sure they're in there every quarter but the other side of that coin and i have a number of clients that are like this i you know i am talking to the ceo because these are small businesses and i am their outsourced cmo marketing yeah department you get the micromanaging CEOs, which is like the other half of that, which is like too much involvement, right? Like really micromanaging pixel, managing pixels on a website, you know, literally <laughs> that much detail. And that's, that's like, that's just as bad. That's actually that worse bad. in a way. Totally. So, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely not looking for the micromanagers. It's about the good fit as well. Yeah, you know, it, it definitely is about, do you trust me? Do you, you've hired me? This is, you know, you know that I'm the person for this. I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there something better you could be doing? And maybe giving them some education and books and things to do to go, can you go and get good at this <laughs> and come back to me, get off the pixels? <laughs> yeah, well, I find you can't really change people. You could avoid them, but you can't change them. So yeah. That's you yeah, you're going to have to look at <laughs> Jan's like we have that with the visionary. Um, and <laughs> it's about that's in the qualifying process, you know, going where are they at? Like, hang on a second, you know, can they let go? Um, but yeah. definitely, like I, I have been talking about it for so long. I worked with Avidly. It's a large agency who was doing um, mergers and acquisitions. And I spotted it a long time ago, even just a simple thing like, HubSpot's got amazing videos, right? They're absolutely amazing. But no offense to all the Americans, Europeans don't want to listen to an American accent all the time. They'll take it, but they prefer to hear a UK accent or their own nationality or even better, their own language. And if you took just the HubSpot videos and replicated all of them in your niche, in your own accent, in your own language, you're laughing. 
like that's your training academy you know and put your own twist on it and and that's what people want to hear now they want to feel connected to it um, and that's that's where you you can start to build out all that training and education and then you build it into the sales process going hey I know you're thinking about a new website here's all the pitfalls that people have made in the last 10 years of us building websites and there's a video next minute you're having a really good conversation with someone especially if they have watched the video and you know that they have right because you can see that <laughs> very cool awesome uh well unless anyone has any other questions i think we can let cloda go for now oh my god could you please let me go because i have had 12 hours of calls can you believe it <laughs> I've been on calls since eight o'clock this morning and it's now eight o'clock at night, but I don't know how I do it and I have to go and eat something and go to sleep. But I, as you can tell, I just love this so much. And thank you, Alex, because this uh, there's just been huge gaps that I was out there for ages going, oh, I think you should do this and that. And now I'm finally working with these companies that have the solutions and we're building them and uh, really looking forward. To I got to get start working with Paul Reitzer. That's my next goal. Get in there under um marketing ai institute learn a bit more about that side of things yeah very cool and if you have any other links or anything chat them to me and i'll add them to the recording and post it in uh, the feed for now but as soon as we get more from cloda we'll package it up into a its own little learning center yeah we've got a good video on the events and then i'll just put this there's a landing page there that's got some more all the information in it and that um that podcast with debbie who is has turned into a friend. She's great. I can't wait to, for her to be able to allowed to fly and come and uh, visit me in Ireland or visit her in the UK.